<laughs> Folks, welcome back to the second hour. We're going to do the fourth part of the Teach Me Start America, America Your Gods Are Dead. And I think let's change America Your God Is Dead to America Your Gods Are Dead, if you don't mind. America okay. Your Gods Are Dead. We have many gods. We have many gods. My goodness, I, we have so many gods today, I couldn't even begin to count them all for you. Really. Do we have enough fingers and No, toes? no, we don't. And, and I'm going to start off, we, we're discussing Christian duty versus, versus constitutional rights and why the second was losing so badly. But it's talking about gods. I want to mention Kelly and Joe loaned me a book here, the Sa Satan in D.C., I believe the name of it. Mm -hmm. I had a page in there on page 35, uh, spending in 2012 on HUD and health care and other things uh, that the government provides, $788 billion, almost a trillion dollars in 2012. All that is unbiblical and even unconstitutional. And the government don't provide it, we do. That's exactly right. That made them our Lord, our provider, our God kind of. They are our lawgiver too. We follow all the rules that cause we don't, we lose our benefits. They are our lawgiver. Am I telling the truth? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But I want to start back in on the back of point, I, 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 and I'm going to get through this today, and we'll decide whether we're going to continue on some other things later on. But I'll wrap today on, the, on this one, just on the God given duty. We've got to get rid of that word, a God given right. It's a duty. He blesses us when we hit, when you fulfill our duty with the, the the means to own and protect ourselves. And, and the, I hate to use the word right, but he doesn't give rights to us. We give this blessings as servants. Just as, just as parents give blessings to the children of obey them and privileges to do what they want to do and trust them with it. That's how he is with us. He's a, he's a heavenly father. He's not our heavenly servant. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm going to ask you to read First Timothy chapter five, you will, Joe, verse eight again. To get into this, uh, into this lesson. If any, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Yeah. Now that is so clearly spoken, and I say this humbly, but I say with all the force of the laws of, of, the, of the Spirit of God behind it. If you call yourself a believer and you will not provide for your own spiritually, physically, mentally, and even the point of protection, if necessary, you have denied the Word of God. You denied the faith, and you're worse than a heathen, an unbeliever. And folks, please don't be deceived that you can go to heaven with that. First, First Corinthians 6 9 says the effeminate men, which means soft womanish men, will not go to heaven. I'm sorry, I didn't write the book, folks. It's just what it says. We become so effeminate that we won't even punish evildoers anymore. Right. Well, I mean, seriously, we don't. Mm -hmm. The Bible prescribes penalties for certain crimes, doesn't it? But we don't want to do it, Bill. It sounds too harsh. Oh, God, God. Yeah, exactly. So we become effeminate. I become effeminate. Mm -hmm. And I've had to learn to grow out of that point and become effeminate <coughs> because I cannot teach and preach the, the laws, the judgments, and the statutes of the Lord God Almighty and myself not keep them. Mother murders a baby, it's not murder no more, it's her right. <laughs> exactly, yes. Now back to the second amendment, I'm going to make a few highlights on this on this issue, and I'll make some notes here. But I know that I've been a member, I was a member of the NRA, well, I joined it for life 30, 40 years ago. I also support GOA, which are two groups, especially GOA, that we'll say are pro-gun groups, okay? And I've been a member of that, but we've forgotten that it's not a responsibility to support groups, it's our duty to obey God. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a big difference there, isn't there? There's a big difference there. Yeah. And because the Second Amendment was codified by the U.S. by the Constitution and a, a constitutional republic, it's and brought under the jurisdiction of the republic by being codified into it. The constitutional republic can also take away that codified right. Right. Anyone that can guarantee it can take it away. True. And it's been doing so for a lot, ever since it's been written on those. The, the, the Second Amendment is probably the most, most attacked so-called right in the, in the Constitution so far. Everything it does is regulating them both, is it not? Mm -hmm. So it, it hasn't worked too well. You remember <coughs> it, uh, up in uh, U.S. versus Miller in 1939, they took away a bunch of guns. Mm -hmm. I mean, who needs a machine gun? You know, you can still get them. You've got to pay a big tax on them, be licensed to have it. 
So is it, when, it ceases, when, it, when you have to be licensed to own something, it's no longer a right. It's a privilege. Mm -hmm. 1968, remember that one? Mm -hmm. Almost word for word, Hitler, 1939 Act. In Germany. Mm -hmm. Almost word for word. Uh, I remember up until that year, you could buy guns through a catalog. Mm -hmm. We did. Yep. Sears catalog sold guns and different things. After that, no more of that. So this C, that's a guaranteed constitutional right that was withdrawn somewhat, wasn't it? Hmm. I remember back in, in June, 20, June 26, 2008, remember that? The decision, uh, D.C. versus Hitler? Hitler? <coughs> and man, we won the great victory of a right to keep bear arms in because the Supreme Court ruled that the right to keep bear arms was individual right. Mm -hmm. It voted 5-4 to in our favor. Mm -hmm. Now stop and think. Mm -hmm. Walker went five to four in the other direction. If if nine can decide it's a right, can nine decide it's not a right? Mm -hmm. Now, if folks, this is serious. When you start trusting men to regulate your lives, you're going down a bad road. You know, before the 1920s, silencers was, was considered ethical. What was it? Silences was considered oh, yeah, ethical yeah. to not disturb your neighbors. That's exactly hours. right. That's true. Mm -hmm. 1992, Congressman Major Owen wanted to amend the Constitution to repeal the Second Amendment. You see what happened? We substitute man's rights for God's duties. He'll mm -hmm. do that next year. Constitutionals admit, admit this, that the Second Amendment didn't grant a right to just acknowledge a pre-existing right. It, that holds some truth. It does. But it, it doesn't alter the jurisdictional overtones uh, that, especially uh, as the framers did not really put into writing a biblical authority for this amendment to say this is a God-given duty. They didn't put it in there. It was not mentioned. If we take away from being a right and make it a duty that before our Creator, that makes a whole a whole different uh, uh, way to look at it. If it is my duty, then I cannot opt out. I mean, just listen to me. If I have a right to carry a gun, that doesn't mean I don't have to do it. I don't have to really have to do it then because it's a right. It's not a duty. But when God says do it, I don't have a way to opt out of that without yeah, without disobeying Him. Do you understand the difference, Phil? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And if enough people opt out of a right, don't want to do it, for whatever reason, what happens to the right? You lose it. It goes away. If you don't, or if you don't use it, you lose it. It goes from a right to a privilege to not even a privilege. You're not exactly right. So when we see it's a God-given duty for every believer to arm themselves, and by the grace of God only, in the state of West Virginia, now you can do that without even getting a permit and you're for even, un for even from concealed carry. Mm -hmm. Everyone should carry without question. Mm -hmm. So, if to be to be truthful, can God's law be codified? No, <coughs> it's already codified. Yeah, and it is in his book. Yeah, you don't need to recodify. Man can't regulate God's law. They do on the surface, mm -hmm. but they cannot do it forever. It won't last. Uh, Robertson and Baldwin, in 1897, listen to this, affirmed that the Bill of Rights were not intended to lay down any novel principle of government, but simply to embody certain guarantees and immunities which we had inherited from our English ancestors rather than from God. Ooh. Ouch. That is a direct slap in the face of the Almighty and in the church's face. But did anybody say anything? Mm -hmm. In the same ruling, uh, the, the, the court ruled that restricting the right to concealed carry does not violate the Second Amendment. 1897, folks, that's been a while back. Because responsibility uh, was given as a duty by God, shouldn't somebody have noticed that back then? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Now, I want to show you something about a lot of people don't want to read because they just don't want to believe it. And especially as Christians. How many of y'all noticed I was packing behind the pulpit? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not ashamed of that. No. I was packing behind the pulpit. Mm -hmm. You were too, weren't you? Mm -hmm. You're on a trip? Yeah, I'm going on a trip. I'm not ashamed of that fact. I'm obeying my God's Dad command. Dad asked me many times, we was going out of state, North Carolina, 
go into town and say, Dick, you got your pistol in your pocket, yes I do, Dad. Good. Right. Years ago, we were traveling out to, uh, well, my oldest grandson is now 14, well, 15. I was coming in from Russia, they adopted him. We were going to fly to meet him at the airport, and uh, we were going through Kansas. I had a 32 pistol strapped on my leg and a holster. Walked into a McDonald's store, as part of a service station, McDonald's all together, and there three guys, uh, three guys standing around back the store. I mean, they were a shady-looking character. I noticed who walked in. They weren't buying anything. They were just standing around, looking around, walking around. And we up, we up and ordered them back and sat down, and my daughter-in-law then, Pam, said, uh, you see those three guys? I said, yeah, I saw those three guys. And I said, don't worry, we, we got them outnumbered. I got seven on my leg, you know. So, and she said, I'm so glad you do that. It made me feel good she said that. She realized I was carrying the gun, and she wasn't too concerned because I was there. Mm -hmm. right. So, you know, bad guys could care less what your feelings are. Mm -hmm. They could care less that you're a Christian or non-Christian, they don't care if you believe in the right to, uh, to keep them bare arms or not. If you don't have one, they want what you got. Guess what? You're going to get it. You're going to get it. Yeah. Any comments so far? Psalms 149. Read with me if you would. Now see if this was something that we maybe we should just take out of the Bible. You know. Could you repeat, please? Psalms 149. Thank you. Uh, Everybody says, well, the Second Amendment is needed to protect us from tyrants. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no, that was given to us as a duty by God a long time before the Second Amendment. Psalm 149. I want to read the whole thing because it's kind of tied together. Pray <clears throat> to the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song in his praise in the congregation of saints. Will that be us? <clears throat> saints? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Is that us? Yes. Should we be joyful in our king? Yes. Do you know, Phil Hudock, if I had not been a believer and know where Dad went, I'm going to see him again one day, I wouldn't be too joyful today. I'd be awful sure. sad. Sure. Because I wouldn't have any hope. Mm -hmm. The last time I saw my dad been put on the ground, the last time I saw my dad, wouldn't it? But that ain't true today. Let him praise his name in the dance. Let him sing praise unto him with the temp, uh, tremble and tremble in heart. For the Lord taketh pleasure in, in his people. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them let them sing aloud upon their beds. Now pay attention. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Mm -hmm. To execute dread vengeance upon the heathen and punishments unto, upon the people. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. To execute upon them their judgment written, this honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Woo! Mm -hmm. Oh, but now we can't do that. We can't judge. Mm -hmm. To ask your vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains, nobles with fetters of iron. To ask you upon the judgment written, this honor, it's an honor. It's a duty and an honor. How bad do we feel that one? That's a military term. Yes, it is. It's true that we read in Scripture that God is a war God. Yeah, he is. He's, he, he is. Yeah, he is. Mm -hmm. vengeance, a, vengeance belongs to him. So why do Christians think that today that we need a state license or sanction, if you will, to uh, for self-defense? A lot of them probably do. And, and, or, 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 or any other duty before God. For example, other duty before God. Do you know that before you come together physically, you're supposed to be married? Mm -hmm. Do you all know that's Bible? Mm -hmm. Do you know they're supposed to make a covenant between you and the Almighty before you come together physically in the union of marriage? Mm -hmm. That's Bible. But we have to have a license to get married. True. Mm -hmm. That's by the state law, right? It's how they sneak in. It is. It is. And you have to have a license today, uh, you know, to, for, to file on C3 church uh, privilege of keeping your money in the church. You have to ask for permission, which is a license to do it. I thought it was our duty. Is, is, is God's law 
supposed to be subservient to the state's laws? No. Mm -mm. Now, since it happened, who's to blame? Mm -hmm. well, Phil, what's the meaning of a license in the first place? Yeah. Well, Black's Law Dictionary is permission to do that which would otherwise be illegal. Right. Illegal is something they come up with that doesn't have anything to do with lawful. Illegal, legal has to do with statutes, with policies. Exactly. So they are declaring through um, saying they are sovereign. That's that's yeah. what they're doing when yeah. they're. Well, they, they took the place of God. Right. They took the yeah. place of the Almighty. Right. God alone is those sovereign according to Scripture, but man's yeah. not declared that. The kings have declared that. Uncle Sam God. Exactly. And that, that starts from the, from the little gods that run them down the streets here giving you tickets to the ones in the White House. Does it not? Mm -hmm. And the world controllers, UN. So when you read on the state constitution, which I've read many different state constitutions, it says, in the sovereign state of which is declaring that the government is head and the people are the tail. Would that be correct? That's about right. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's all right. The first sovereign, the people should be sovereign. Mm -hmm. Now, <coughs> mar marriage and preaching and self-defense so far are, are, are I don't call it legal without a license in most places. And, but up until now, they've been lenient. They'll give this, the church a 501c3. They'll give the marriage license. They'll give you sometimes a permit to carry a gun. But what if that leniency ends? What if they say, all right, no more. We're not going to grant more license unless you follow all our rules. Yeah, licenses aren't just revenue. They're control. Exactly. So if they decide they would withdraw that license, you know, businesses have to have license to run. How do you think the federal government tells businesses they have to, have to serve homosexuals? Mm -hmm. They can withdraw their license. They can't do business anymore. Mm -hmm. You follow that? Mm -hmm. Since when, Joe, do I need permission for man to earn a living? Shouldn't. Well, since well, they declared the people the enemy, because that's what they did. Yes, yeah, since then. The well, well, there's another thing, too, is many states now are requiring you to have a license to put a garden in your yard. That's true. It's coming that way. Mm -hmm. It is. Even though you don't get a license, during the living, you still so in a basic a state or federal permit. That's right. That's exactly right. So you're asking permission to be fed. Yeah. Or to Throw, supply, to, to to supply your food. For so that yeah. first thing the chapter five doesn't just apply to guns. It applies to feeding your family. Mm -hmm. I got to get permission from the seeds to go to work. Right. So what boils down to, in the Second Amendment, usurp the authority of God's Word and put it in man's hands. I don't like it, folks. I thought this was the greatest thing in the world until I started studying the Scripture and realized I've been deceived. I was serving false gods. I was trying to take this God in the face of man's evil and they were tearing it to pieces. I witnessed to a man a couple weekends ago at a family dinner. And I said, uh, Bud, you know there's nothing you can do without a driver's license if you think about it. He said, you know, you're right. I went to the hospital the other day for treatment. That's the first thing he asked me is driver's license, a form of identification. Well, if you have to depend on the Second Amendment and the courts and the Constitution, then if popular vote and Congress, Supreme Court, can, over, can just say that's been done away with, who then actually becomes the, the, the power behind it? If we the people get to decide, then popular vote can take away my right to keep a gun. Mm -hmm. Right? Is that not true? If the, if the people true. of the United States decide they want to true. just outlaw guns, true. they can just, out, just vote it out and then I'm done. They outlawed in Randolph County that you can hunt on your property on Sunday by popular vote. On well, your Sunday? You're going to get a sociopath. Or oh, yeah. Or a sociopath, so. Because they're control freaks who are God unto themselves. Well, in Castle Rock versus Gonzalez in this 2005, the Supreme Court <coughs> ruled that police have no obligation to protect the citizens. But city, county, state, and feds keep controlling our duty to defend ourselves. <laughs> now let this sink in. Am I, is this less of making sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they, that crime escalates so they can pass more controls more laws. But see, all this is a result of a constitutional right codified by man. Yeah. I mean, those we're having a good shooting every month. Oh, we are. 
And now, of course, this in the media, everything you have is an assault weapon. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? I told people months ago, you expect one at least a month. I give one every month. In 1 Samuel chapter 13, let's go there real quick. I'll read that to you. 1 Samuel 13. Just a few verses there. 1 Samuel chapter 13. You see, what we're seeing in America and all over the world, especially that we, in some ways, have been blessed more than other nations. At least we didn't mention it in man's law that there's something we could do. Lord, forgive us for stupidity. The Bible teaches something, a little real quick here, that to take away the people's means to defend themselves is what all timers do eventually. First Timothy chapter 13. Would you read verse 19, Theo? Okay. First Timothy, I'm sorry, First Samuel chapter 13, verse 19. First Samuel 13, 19? Yeah. Now there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make them swords or spears. What do you mean no smiths? Blacksmiths. Um, yeah, the metal workers. Then they took them away for what reason? Because they uh, might make swords, swords or fear, spears. <laughs> they might defend themselves. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So is, 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 is yeah. our arms control anything new? <clears throat> You see, Israel knew their duty was to defend themselves. That's how they got started with, the, with their militias in, the, in Numbers chapter 1, and how they started to protect themselves. They knew it was their duty to keep themselves armed. So when they sinned against God, what did God do to them? Mm-hmm. Took away their mm-hmm. arms. Mm-hmm. Means of defense. Don't remember which king it was in the Bible. One of the kings told them all of their uh, kitchen utility not to be dogged. I don't remember that one. Mm-hmm. I, I think verse 22 that. goes along with that. Yeah, it did. So it came to pass in the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people that were with Saul and Jonathan. Didn't take long. <laughs> no. So they went to war with swords, uh, I mean, I'm oh, sorry, with pitchforks and, and mattocks. They saw in the Bible, very same chapter, mm-hmm. same place. They had to go to war without them. So because the Lord God withdrew his blessings, not their rights, the blessings. <laughs> we're losing our blessings because we've not obeyed the laws of God. We've allowed the murder of 60 million children, and we're losing the uh, blessings of self defense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If we would not defend the most innocent of all, why do we deserve, deserve defense? That's exactly right. Any comments so far? It's like taking a knife to a gunfight. Yeah. Exactly. It doesn't work. Well, if, if people point to the Second Amendment uh, as their authority to keep and bear arms, then, I, then, then that authority, now pay attention, we'll say this, okay? If that's where the authority comes from, then it didn't exist prior to 1789. Mm-hmm. What, that, what does that mean to that? What was the Constitution ratified? Mm-hmm. Sam mm-hmm. So if we had to go back to that to find authority, then before then we didn't have the authority. There wasn't no right. Boy, smart. If I can figure this out, folks, I want to tell you what. This podium can figure that out. The authority did not come from man's writings or man's ideas. It came before man was even created. Mm-hmm. Any comments so far, Kelly? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's right there. So if the 32nd Amendment uh, is more or less the God of the land, then we the people will have to obey the same kind of laws they did in Britain and Australia eventually. Yeah. Because we the people decide they don't want me more. Well, wouldn't it be true if you go all the way back to the Magna Carta, they, they say the Magna Carta had teeth because they got the king to agree to it. Yeah. So it really came from the king. Yeah, it did. So we'll be damned. And he can he change his mind later, didn't he? Right. Joe, Joe, look up Joshua chapter 24, please. Can I look up Nehemiah chapter, uh, chapter 9? I'm going to go to Revelation 13. Joshua 24? Yeah. He 
You got there yet? Yeah, I'm getting there. Any comments so far, Dick? Okay, we're there. Okay. Read Joshua 24, <coughs> verse 15. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Do you reckon we ought to start with ourselves? Mm -hmm. You know, it took me a while for you to get over the being uncomfortable carrying a gun over a girl. It took me a while to get over that because nobody else done it. It's odd. Yeah. Now people see me, they expect it. Really. Mm -hmm. I left the other day and felt naked. I left in Gun's house. Somebody asked me, where's your gun? I was embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I forgot it. I started getting my pants on much anymore. You know, but the people I've had those dreams that I did. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with all sincerity, people <clears throat> see me now. They know it and expect it. And I've been told by many people they expect that. As a matter of fact, Tommy, the director of the funeral home, I carried it down there. He said, "I won't thank you for carrying a gun in here." He's seen too many dead people. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, he carried one also. Did he to the funeral services? He yeah. said he'd been he, he had one guy try to stop him from burying the guy in the graveyard. Said he go burn here. Yeah, I'm oh. serious. <laughs> and he threatened to shoot him, and he had a gun. He said, well, you do what you got to do, you know? Mm. So anyway, Nehemiah chapter 9, Kelly, would you mind reading verse 36? Yeah, verse yeah, Nehemiah chapter 9. Yeah. Talk about, he's a little bit, uh, Nehemiah's a minute before the God. They lost their land. They lost everything they had. Ne chapter 36 says what? Your verse of the end of them. Behold, we are servants this day, and for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers, to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof, behold, we are servants in it. Had God withdrew his blessings? Yeah. Had he? Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, Phil, would you read verse 37? I'm not there. Oh, okay. Then would you read verse 37? Mm -hmm. And it yielded much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us. Let's stop for a second. It yields the increase now to the people or to the king? To the kings. King. There you go. Okay. Whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Whoa. Oh, well, that, that wouldn't happen today, would it? Mm -hmm. That hits the yeah. right on the head, do not it? Yeah, right there. Go ahead, Lynn. Also, they had dominion over our bodies and over our cattle at their pleasure, and we are in great distress. We're in great distress. Does right that now. fit today at all? Absolutely. They've got dominion over everything. Folks, we did not lose our rights. We lost our blessings. Because we didn't do our duty. One more verse, Revelation 13. Turn there with me, would you? I'm going to finish up with a few more comments. Mm -hmm. Revelation 13. I'll be done with this in lean time, I think, today. It'll be right at a half hour. Now, I want you to listen to this. In verse 15, uh, chapter 13. Verse 7. Talking about the Antichrist and world power, if you will. It was given to him to make war with the saints mm -hmm. and to overcome them. Now, if we're not here, how we overcome us? The church has been raptured, then why are the saints doing here? And power is given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Mm -hmm. Because of the sin of the world, the Lord God withdrew his blessings and millions are going to die. Yeah. The wrath of Satan was poured upon us. Mm -hmm. And in Nehemiah, you saw he put kings over us to rule us. And in Psalm, you'll finally put kings over us that hate us because we haven't obeyed him. Phil, what can I do about that? What part can I change in this? We can only look and change ourselves. Exactly right. We got for we have to do what we're told to do. Let the chips fall where they may. How many people have been martyred for standing for Christ in, in history? Millions. Millions. We can't even count. Why we ain't better? Now, we all know what Hosea 4 6 says, right? 
Uh, and people died for lack of knowledge. People were destroyed for lack of knowledge. Is mm -hmm. that true? Mm -hmm. That's correct. And he said that the same part of that goes on to say in the same verse, because, because you forgot my laws, I'm going to forget your children. And I want to ask you today to please, once again, look at the children. Look at your children and grandchildren, how they're living, shacking up and having children. No remorse. No sin. Don't, don't even blush about it. Yeah. You bring up until we get mad at you. That includes Christians doing it just as exactly. well. They go to church. Yeah. Am I telling the truth, Dick? <laughs> totally. So, is, are our, have our children been cursed because of my dad's and my sins? Yes. Yeah. Let's go to Proverbs. Got to hurry through this. Proverbs chapter 14. Should we be careful and very discerning as to what we believe and who we believe? We're told to. Phil, I got to ask you this. You're, and I say this humbly, me. I mean, I mean you're, a, you're a very intelligent young man. I just don't quit. Well, I know, but you, you're intelligent. I mean, Lynn said, "Look at who you married." You proved that point. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but have we been deceived? Oh, it's uh, almost unbelievable how much we've been deceived. To where, as the Bible said, you know, black for white, sweet for bitter, everything's reversed, and and. They seem to love to have love to have it so. Yeah, it's easier that it's easier now. It, it's easier to go with the flow. No that's responsibility. Exactly. I'll be taken yeah. care of. It's I easier to go downstream. I mean uh, I should to say this. They wanted to create zombies and they did. I'm watching evil not only been accepted but condoned. Mm -hmm. in my own family in some ways. What once was an atrocity, an absolute abomination, today is not even blinked at. I mean, really. When I was growing up, I knew you never heard about abortion. Oh, no. no that, that was, no. That was, it was illegal, it totally was, unlawful. You went to jail or died for it. Right, but now it's acceptable. I mean, in Monterville, West Virginia, up the road, just a few miles, when I was a young boy, two, a young boy and girl shacked up, and everybody got ran out of town. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Today, no, he blinks at it. In fact, we approve it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Chapter 14 of Proverbs. Look at verse 15. Oh, look at this. Oh, this hurts. Feel read that. Read that first part of that verse to me. The simple believeth every word. What's simple mean? Uh, simple means uh, simple-minded, uh, ignorant. Uh, Slow, maybe. Yeah. But the prudent man looketh well to his going. Mm -hmm. He figures out what's right and wrong. Now, feel one of your favorite verses of the Bible is next. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse twenty-one. Use oh, yeah. a lot. What's it say? <laughs> Start me out. Try. I need a little bit more than that. Oh, you, you, you. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> prove, prove, prove all things. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Prove all things. Now, wait a minute. When it says prove all things, should we be very cautious of any document or any article, any man writes, to make sure it lines up the Word of God? Yes. yes. You yes. can read it and understand it completely. And that's why God gave us a brain. That's why I give scriptures also, right? And scriptures to go with it, yeah. Any comments so far? What are you thinking, Joe? God is a God of love, but He's also a just God. He does not tolerate disobedience. Not forever. No. In fact, that verse we were talking about in Zephaniah, sometimes I think that verse points to me. It's a judgment. Oh, it, it points to everybody, mm -hmm. all of us. Yeah. But is it possible then, I'm asking this question sincerely, is it possible for false doctrines and idols to become such a part of our society, a, a very fabric of society, that we don't even, that we fail to recognize it? Mm -hmm. Is it possible? Just look at history. What we, how, how something used to always say, or you still say it, 
what we tolerated today, we will embrace Exactly. Tomorrow. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're embracing the gods that our ancestors tolerated, but before then, we would have been killed for tolerating sure. even thinking about it. So today we're tolerating and embracing the sins of idolatry and accepting them as being okay. And as the children of Israel did, like Isaiah, and I've been thinking about that one, Isaiah <clears throat> was really upset with the people because they would take this, the idolatry of the world, the gods of the world, and mix them into the temple. We're doing the same thing. Oh, we have done it. Our, our hearts are temple. Yeah. And we're mixing that evil. And we, 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 it's become such a, again, such part of us that so we don't even recognize as what it is. And just for example, these are two minor ones, but how about Christmas and Easter? Mm -hmm. Pagan holidays. I mean, really, seriously. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we, that's been going in this nation for 200 years. Does it make it right? What about the perverse you put them on pedestals? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's just, yeah. I mean, we have taken what was once an abomination and made an idol out of it. That's right. Look at and we, made, and, and we believe that it's a good thing because we put Jesus in it. Yeah. But see, oh, yeah. But God doesn't counterfeit the things of Satan. Satan counterfeits the things of God. That's exactly right. Matthew chapter 15, if you want to turn with me. Is it possible, is it, is it possible even inside the church? That we start putting the tradition of men before God's laws. That's about where we're in. <laughs> Verse 3, Christ speaking. Why do ye also transgress? I mean, disobey the commandment of God by your tradition. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, he that cursed father and mother, let him die the death. Now, what's that mean, die the death? You put to death. You were put to death. This are your mom and dad, put, you were put to death. Mm -hmm. You reckon I will stop the lot of juvenile delinquents? Uh -huh. Well, I tell you what, now there's been Do what? There'll be a lot of deaths. Now. Oh, you're right. Starting with the parents. But ye say, Whoso shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be prompted me, and are not his father and mother, ye shall be free. Thus ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your traditions. You hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Hypocrites, he said. The next verse the next, you know, that says, you, you draw an eye with your mouth but your, and, your, and your lips, but your heart's far from me. Mm -hmm. And he said, You worship me in vain. You're worshiping in vain. You're teaching and doctrines and commandments of man, not my commandments. Now that's a very straightforward <coughs> accusation and, 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 and proof against us. All kingdoms, whether it be earthly or spiritual, exist by promoting their own law system. They have to. In order to exist, any kingdom has to have a law system and enforce it. Mm -hmm. You understand that? If I don't enforce the laws, they have no kingdom. Whether the kingdom is right or wrong, the laws must be enforced and they are enforced. Today we have business owners being run out of business because they, want, they will not serve abomination called homosexuality, but they're being put out of business by the authorities of the, law, of the system of the kingdom they live in. They're now living in man's kingdom under tyrannical government and that law system will feed itself upon the people. Is that true? Yeah, they punish the good and reward the bad. Yep. I'm going to go back to the notes here a second, too. But up until the six, up, up through the 1600s, up to the early 1700s, Amer America did have a good and noble character, I would say, because they actually met to fulfill God's laws. They didn't have legislators to pass laws and regulations and taxes. They met to make sure the laws of God were being fulfilled. Their constitutions they wrote said you had to be a Christian to serve an office. Just like Deuteronomy chapter 17 says, choose from among your brethren. True? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and, and up to that time, we were founded as a Christian nation. Just that easy, not that complicated. We were a Christian nation. And up until 1789, it, it all started to change. We put it from under in the name of God, Thunder, we the people. And things started sliding downhill almost immediately. Let me explain to you something. A kingdom under a king is not necessarily a bad form of government if you have a righteous king. But how often does that first king go from being a righteous king to the next generation not being so righteous? You remember 1 Samuel chapter 8 in the Bible? 
Samuel ruined the people and his sons weren't like him. They started doing evil things. Mm -hmm. And instead of people turning and saying, Samuel, we will repent and go back to our God. We want to follow him and make sure your children do or get rid of them. He said, no, I'll tell you what. Just make it easy. Give us king like all the nations got. That true? Mm -hmm. He said, give us a king, didn't he, didn't he feel? Yes, he give did. us a written document and say, we want a king and he'll do this, do this, do this. He'll feed us. He'll clothe us. He'll house us. And, uh, and, and uh, Samuel said, okay, you have a king. But he's going to take your sons and daughters to fight unjust wars. He's going to tax your flocks and your homes. He's going to destroy every, every part of your life. And they said, that's okay. We want a king. Hmm. True? Yes. So government in and of itself is not necessarily evil, but it tends that direction Mm -hmm. Very much. Because men controlled it. Without the laws of God to regulate every aspect of it, it will devolve into an evil dictatorship. Power corrupts. John, you're saying that us to rule ourselves goes to a person to rule over us. It will always be, the end result would be tyranny. Yeah, exactly. That absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If we only had moral righteous, virtuous people in office. We'd have heaven on earth, wouldn't we? Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it doesn't last very long. It tends to go down the hill. When you put the power and authority to control a law system in the hands of men, it's doomed to fail. Yeah. Let's go to Judges, if you would, chapter 2. I opened right up to it. All right. Wow. <laughs> I just talked about, about, about the first time of chapter 8 and what happened there. You know, and we read that, I've read this and taught this in the first time of chapter 8 many times, how the people turn from a theocracy yeah. to a man-made government, a kingdom, a kingship. And they were warned, but they also told in Deuteronomy chapter 17 how to choose rulers from among them that would serve God. And they would, have, they would take no... Uh, bribes to corrupt justice and they would see that the law of God was done as our nation did for about 150 years. But when that was taken out, when the laws of God were no longer considered the absolute authority in society and man could put his own wishes in place of the laws of God, the nation started falling very quickly. Mm -hmm. Didn't it? How long did it take under after 1789 for the Constitution and the men that run this country to start to Please the people. That's the time the ink dried. Exactly right. That's what uh, right. Patrick Henry said. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's what happened. Didn't take long. They took their freedoms and abused them. Well, look how many were asking for a king clear back then. Oh, yeah. So that tells you a lot of them had that mindset. Well, you see, we take it up. This is totally a different uh, amendment. But let's just say, the, let's take the First Amendment. The right of freedom and press. What have we done with that right of freedom of press? Abused it. So now we have a right to produce pornography, right? It's a right. We have a right. Right and wrong. Right and wrong. And, and, and uh, we, see all the, we see the rights of people, uh, I'm saying using rights as a term, that a constitution guaranteed being abused. So what does God do with the <coughs> blessings he gives us? He draws them. It said Jefferson really had a battle when he bought the Louisiana Purchase because that was unconstitutional. He was against doing that, but he knew if America was to grow and prosper, he had to do that, and he didn't want to do it. Yep, the, because he was spending the taxpayers' money. And it's totally wrong. But Judges 2, let's look at one verse. Let's look at verse 10. Talk about the, the generation before the down verse 10 says, And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, I mean they died. And there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. Mm -hmm. That's today. They forgot him. And that verse says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. Not us. No. No, they, they, we wouldn't do that. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, the gods of people that were around about them, and bowed by themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord to anger. Mm -hmm. And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Asherah. Not on the reader's study. I mean, it's, it's, well, let's do read one more verse. And the anger of the Lord was, against, was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of spoilers. Mm -hmm. We've been spoiled. 
Yeah, tell me one. Tell me one cock picking thing that you can do without permission in this country. Breathe. Yeah, I don't know. Man. I'm trying to restrict that too. Oh, you don't blow smoke somewhere. I mean, think about that. I mean, just think. Can you live in your own home without permission? No. No. And spoiled them, and, the, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies and around about so they could not any longer stand before their enemies. That hurts, doesn't it? <clears throat> well, even in the next verse down, it says the hand of the Lord was against them. Absolutely. Henry David Thoreau said this, There are a thousand hacking at the branches of evil to one who is striking at the root. Ooh. Larry Pratt said this on the interview he did with the uh, uh, pastor uh, Nebraska when I was sitting there, Ted uh, Whalen, who had taken a knife to a gunfight. We went before the Supreme Court with the Second Amendment and they cut us all to pieces. Mm -hmm. We didn't go in the name of God as a duty. We went in as a right and we lost it. In Matthew, one, one more verse in clothing, chapter 6. I'm going to like those discs because it... it uh talks about what, what can happen when you uh, turn to God, repent of your wickedness, and turn from your wicked ways. Mm -hmm. That is the key to the whole thing. Without repentance, Christ said, well, we'll perish. And the, to me, that's a daily thing, Joe. Oh, if I get me out of the way, I could do really good. I tried, but I ran into myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I pat myself going to come, don't you? <clears throat> but this is a prayer the Lord told us to pray. He said, this we call it the Lord's Prayer, but it's actually a prayer that, uh, uh, yeah, it's part of the prayer that he said, we need to pray as, as disciples. But it said in verse 10, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. How deceived we've been for so many years thinking we're doing the will of God, but everything contrary to what he said. So that means we're doing our own will. Aren't you glad grace is involved, Joe? Mm-hmm. Because I would have never make it. Don't you know that Israel and saw their error of their ways when they were under tyranny, they realized, hey, we messed up. Mm -hmm. That didn't withdraw the judgment that it may have saved their souls. Any comments on lessons so far? It's excellent. And I could go on, if you want me to, in the other areas on this. I mean, we get through all the members. We get through all this, all the writings that man brought forward. But if men like him, Patrick Henry could see it back when it was happening, before it ever happened, mm -hmm. how come we can't look back and see it? Yeah. So, any comments at all? Yeah. I think if they had a... Uh, the big electrical store was shut down all the computers and the televisions and the radios. And if people go back to what we was 200 years ago, you'll think you see a churches and revivals, revanticles. Yeah, and they see a lot of people going crazy because they can't get on the phone. Yeah, a lot of them would probably die from fright. Yeah, I think we have well, a that's separating the weak from the chance. <laughs> but I think we heard a lot of people with these statements that the children of Israel said in the wilderness. Oh, I wish I was back in Egypt where we had leeks and fish and melons mm -hmm. to eat. Mm -hmm. And we're turning to the Lord their God. That's very true. Well, if y'all would like, later on we'll do another lesson. We'll make less maybe on the First Amendment. If you'd like to, you like to do that. Now, if you want to do that, this, this doesn't get any easier. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes into a lot, and it's, not, it's maybe no more in depth, but it's just a lot more information to consume. I can't say that the People who wrote this intended for it to be this way, but they stroke and open up Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get, if you want to do another one sometime later on, the First Amendment, whatever, I'll do that. But just it's up to y'all really, because you're the ones receiving it. I'm just yeah. preaching it. Of course, I got to get it first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it for this time. We'll see you next time we get. Wow. Born to simpler times. There wasn't the hate and wasn't the crime. Many a father died in.
Twisted desire 